In today's lesson, I will be demonstrating how to retrieve text values within a pivot table. This feature proves to be incredibly valuable when summarizing selected data. By default, pivot tables are designed to display numerical values in the summary, such as counts, sums, or averages. However, I have an example to share with you today regarding this month's delivery schedule. I will import the product name, customer name, and remarks as value fields into the desired field area. As you can observe, the remarks field currently displays a numerical value indicating the count of remarks. However, by utilizing the data model function in Excel, I can retrieve the actual text of each remark for every delivery. Let's dive in and explore how to create these functions in Excel. To begin, let's convert the data into an Excel table. Simply click on any cell within the data and press the Ctrl plus a keys to select the entire table range. Once selected, press Ctrl plus T to convert it into an Excel table. Now press Alter, N and V keys to open the pivot table from table or range window. To enable Excel's data model, ensure that you check the Add this data to the data model option. Although the interface may resemble a standard pivot table generator, you'll notice that the fields are now grouped under a table name. This feature allows us to merge multiple Excel tables using primary keys, greatly enhancing our ability to perform advanced data analysis. Next, I will import the necessary fields for my report, except the value field. If directly import remarks column, pivot table convert to a number value, so let me remove the remarks field for now. To enhance the delivery schedules more informative, I will import the date and product fields into the row area. This arrangement will facilitate grouping the product deliveries based on their respective dates. Now you can right-click on the row label, choose the collapse or expand options to view the delivery schedule in more organized way. Next, we should develop a data module that allows the delivery remarks to be imported for each customer. Right-click on the table name and choose Add Measure option. It will open me a measure window. This measure window allows us to create custom formulas that generate aggregated values such as sums, averages, counts, or any other calculations based on our data. In other words, the data analysis expressions or DAX language, the measure window refers to a specific area where you define calculations or measures for evaluating and analyzing data in a Power Pivot or Power BI model. As you can see, the measure window already picked the table name for data analysis, we put a custom measure name to be appeared in the pivot fields. For now, I will mention like delivery schedule. Now, let's proceed to write the data module expression for filtering the remark field. To accomplish this, we will utilize the concatenate x function. This function, similar to the concatenate function, allows us to combine multiple values into a single text. It's important to note that concatenate x is a DAX function and is only accessible within the data model. The concatenate x function in this scenario has three arguments. The first argument is the table name, which is a required parameter indicating the table or column from which the values will be retrieved. In this case, we will be using table 4. The second argument is the values to be collected, also a required parameter. The concatenate x function evaluates this expression for each row and concatenates the resulting values. To apply the concatenate x function, we will add the remarks column from table 4 as the expression argument. The third argument is the delimiter. In this case, we will use a comma followed by a space character as the delimiter. This will separate the text string by a comma and a space. Once the formula is completed, it is advisable to check the DAX formula for any errors before clicking the OK button to close the window. If there are no errors, the custom defined formula will appear at the bottom. Now, we can put the value in the value area of the pivot table. As a result, the pivot table will display the text string instead of a numerical value. However, there is still a need for further modification to enhance the readability of the returned text strings. Specifically, we want each remark's text string to start on a new line. To achieve this, we can make some adjustments to the formula. To edit the formula, right-click on the DAX function and select the Edit Measure option. In the formula editor, we will remove the comma from the delimiter argument. Instead, we will press the shift key and enter key after the space character. This will create a line break, forcing each remark's text string to start on a new line. 
Once the formula modification is complete, we can set the alignment of the pivot table to wrap text. This will ensure that the text fields are displayed in a neater and cleaner manner, with each line of the text string appropriately wrapped within the cell. As you can see, the pivot table included with few blank rows. If you wish to exclude any empty rows in the pivot table, we can achieve this by utilizing the filter function within the DAX formula. This function allows us to filter the table argument, specifically omitting any rows that have a blank value in the remarks column. The remaining arguments in the formula will remain the same as previously defined. Once the formula is updated, click the OK button. Upon refreshing the pivot table, you will notice that the formula has successfully omitted all the blank rows, resulting in only the rows where remarks are available being displayed. Feel free to modify the pivot table as desired, utilizing options such as expand and collapse to view a summary of the remarks and gain a better understanding of customer requirements. In this tutorial, we covered the process of importing text into a pivot table using Excel's data model. I trust that you found this tutorial informative and helpful. If you have any further questions or need additional clarification, please leave a comment below. If you have enjoyed this tutorial, I would greatly appreciate it if you could show your support by giving it a thumbs up, share and subscribe to my channel, where I will continue to provide useful and informative content in the future. Thank you for watching this tutorial, and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.